Now let me tell you about the joints of the throat. This can again be asked in your IOC exams because the specimens are placed there. When the examiner asks you to pick up any specimen, then if your viva is doing good, they might even extend it to the joints. So let's see what are the joints here and what are the questions that can be asked on the joints in the foot. So one thing you can see here is the ankle joint. First of all, we talk about, before that, let's talk about the inferior tibiofibular joint. Very commonly asked question. The inferior tibia, you know, tibia and fibula, both are joined by interosseous membrane, right? And that interosseous membrane, it's like a membrane, it's a ligament sort of thing which binds the two bones. So such an example is called to be a syndesmosis. muscle. The two bones held together with the help of a ligament with how many, you know, Articular surfaces is called syndesmosis. So, intermediate radial nerve joint, intermediate tibiofibular joint is said to be a syndesmosis. While the two bones, when they reach above and towards the knee, actually, then you know, tibia posterolaterally and fibula anteromedially at its upper end actually have a joint, and that joint is a plain synovial joint. So, superior tibiofibular joint is a plain synovial joint. Now if they ask like inferior tibiofibular joint. So inferior tibiofibular joint is a very good example of syndesmosis. Rather the best example of syndesmosis is actually these are categorized in the fibrous joints and they actually have negligible movements. So the best example is inferior tibiofibular joint which is an example of syndesmosis. Okay. Now you are seeing is um, yeah. So if they ask what structure is this? This is medial malleolus. This is medial malleolus. It's a downward medial extension of tibia, reaching down and articulating with the medial surface of the talus. And the two articular surface is actually comma shaped. Remember, the, there is a comma shaped articular surface with the talus and medial malleolus. Similarly, here what you're seeing is the lateral malleolus. It is a downward extension of the fibula, the lateral side of the talus and the two you know surfaces talus and lateral calcaneus and lateral malleolus they have this joint again both of them are actually plain synovial joints and between talus and fibula the articular surface is triangular here it's a triangular articular surface this actually helps you know, side determination of fibula you must have seen this in the lower end of the fibula and posteriorly there is a groove on the lateral malleolus remember the groove on the posterior surface of mal uh, lateral malleolus you can see this is the groove here on the posterior surface of lateral malleolus the two tendons passing below the two tendons passing below the yeah posterior surface of the lateral malleolus the two tendons passing are peroneus longus and brevis I am going to tell you is about this joint you can see that this joint is ankle joint this is a ankle joint very important joint sometimes even in your theory exam there is a long question about this this is an ankle joint right so ankle joint first of all you know you should know the bones participating in this it is the inferior surface of tibia and the superior aspect of the talus so the another name for ankle is tibiotalar joint Remember that the inferior surface, the tibia, is concave. It's concave. And the superior surface of talus is convex. So when tibia rests over talus, the joint is like this. Right? So when you, you know, you flex, uh, you know, when we do this movement of flexion, dorsal plantar flexion, dorsal flexion, actually, you know, your, these two surfaces, though they are against each other like this. But the important thing is, you don't have any lateral movements at this joint. So the only possible movement is dorsiflexion, which we count as an extension, and plantar flexion, which we count as a flexion. Got it? So only the movements happening is, you know, extension, flexion, extension, flexion. Because the movement is happening only in a single plane. No other movement is possible. So the joint is, what variety of joint is this? This is a hinge variety of synovial joint. Remember, hinge variety is also this, IT joints. This also is hinge variety of 
sinew will join no movements except flexion and extension similarly is ankle and similarly is also elbow joint okay so that's about the hinge joint but the two malleoli remember me little little malleoli i told you that uh, they also are supporting this joint right so medial malleolus has the common shaped articular surface with the talus on the medial surface lateral malleolus has a triangular articular face to articulate with the lateral aspect of the talus and both the plain synovial joint these two joints are actually gripping and you know uh, strengthening the angle joint the next named important joint here, they, you know, the joints are not visible right here. I'm just telling you the theoretical aspect because sometimes when you are giving good of your viva, the examiner might ask you for the details. Okay, now tell me what are the important name joints you can find here in this ankle portion in the foot. So other point is, you know, <clears throat> talocalcaneo navicular joint. Talus is below to this, right? Talus. And one important problem of the talus is that it's the only bone, rather not the only one, I should tell you, which has no muscular attachments. Talus is one bone which has no muscular attachments. Any other bone, if you know, which has no bony attachments is incus. Remember, incus, that's the middle ossicle on the internal ear. Uh, on the middle, in the middle ear, the middle most, uh, middle uh, ossicle is incus. So, incus and talus, both these two bones have no muscular attachments. Now, about talocalcaneo navicular joint, so the three bones are participating in this, remember. So, talus and navicular, talus and navicular articulate with each other with the help of a ligament together and that's called the spring ligament. And they form a socket like this. So, navicular anteriorly, calcaneum behind with the spring ligament in between, there is a socket formed and onto this socket there is a head of talus placed. So, this is a false variety of ball and socket joint, right? Because the socket, in a true ball and socket joint, the socket should be a single bone and the ball also should be from a single bone but because the socket is here is being formed by two separate bones so that's why it's the false uh, ball and socket variety of synovial joint tello calcaneo navicular joint also called as subtalar joints now another joint here is calcaneum calcaneum actually is aligned like this remember that calcaneum the longitudinal axis is directed upwards and laterally right so the head of calcaneum actually reaches towards the cuboid cuboid is the laterally placed uh, tarsal in the distal tarsal row <coughs> right so head of calcaneum articulates with the cuboid and the calcaneo cuboid joint formed is a example of saddle joint remember saddle joint calcaneo cuboid is a saddle joint and another examples of saddle joint you know is this one between first metacarpal and which which carpal bone trapezium right to trapezium and first metacarpal joint this also is a saddle joint any other examples yes sternoclavicular joint also is example of saddle joint what other example of saddle joint you know yes patellofemoral joint remember patellofemoral joint also is a saddle joint and malleus and incus inquidomalleolar joint is also a saddle joint so i told you so many examples remember all these things which are a part of your because when viva gets good enough you you might be ex <coughs> you know such questions might be uh, you know asked further because it might extend to the general anatomy portion Okay, so these were the joints. The next, I mean, you know, the other things about here, the intertarsal joints. The intertarsal, tarsals, let me tell you, they're the four tarsal bones placed in a linear arrangement transversely. These are medial cuneiform, medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, lateral cuneiform, and cuboid. They're the four tarsal bones placed in a row, and they have intertarsal joints, right? And they are forming the arch of the posterior transverse arch. 
Then you have navicular calcaneum and talus, right? So you have seven tarsal bones. Intertarsal bones, what are the, what's the type of joint? They will be plain synovial joints. Then intermetatarsal joints, because the base of the metatarsals are also joined to each other to the adjacent metatarsals, right? So intermetatarsal joints are also there and then plain synovial joints. Again, important point is to compare. Intermetatarsal joints will be play, you know, present here also, but difference is your thumb is enjoying so much of freedom of movement. Why? Because because there is no intermetacarpal joint between first and second metacarpal. So first metacarpal is completely free from the second metacarpal. So you only you know the four metacarpals here. They at the base they have intermetacarpal joints. Not the first. First is free. But in the foot, all the four, all the five metatarsals, they join with the adjacent metatarsals by intermetatarsal joints. And of course, tarsometatarsal joints, they're also example of plain synovial joint. Then metatarsophalangeal joints, metatarsophalangeal joints. Remember here, what type of joint is this? Metacarpophalangeal joint. Metacarpophalangeal joint because what you're doing is flexion and extension. Apart from this, you are also doing this. You are also doing adduction, abduction at what joints? Metacarpophalangeal joints. So adduction, abduction, flexion, extension, as well as if you try to twist your fingers, you can twist them, right? So twisting also is possible. So this is, a, is what variety of joint? This is ellipsoidal joints. So remember, this is ellipsoidal joint. Similarly, you recall it is that ellipsoidal joint here also. Then IP joints, IP joints, proximal and distal in the four toes and in the thumb you have only two phalanges so it will be only one IP joints. So IP joints again are hinge joints, right? So that was all about revision of the joints of the foot, okay, it's done.